intermittent fasting has become growingly popular over the past couple of years. There's been countless studies popping up left and right, supporting the idea that this lifestyle change may be one of the most beneficial eating habits out there. And that's why in this video we're going to cover four things, the who, what, when, where and why. Before we start, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the Health Insider channel and hit the bell icon for new video notifications. What is fasting? Isn't fasting just starvation? I hear this question all the time so it's important to be clear what is fasting. Fasting is defined as the voluntary abstinence of food for spiritual, health, religious or other reasons. And the key word here is voluntary. You're always in control when you fast. What it means is that there's food available, but you choose not to eat it and the reasons are up to you. Starvation on the other hand is when you don't know when food is going to be available. That's not what fasting is. This is a conscious decision on your part to not eat. Don't forget that you're always in control of this process. You can start fasting at any time, you can stop fasting any time. If you don't feel well you can stop, if you do feel well you can start. You can do more or less, it's always voluntary and that's the key difference between fasting and starvation. Who should fast? There are some people who shouldn't fast. Remember when you're fasting you're not eating, so there's no nutrients and in certain conditions you want to make sure you're getting enough nutrients. That is if you're a child that is still growing, or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, then it's very important to get enough nutrients. So those people should not do long fast for example. There's also other situations, if people are underweight, or if they're malnourished for any reason. Of course then again nutrients are very important and those are situations where you don't want to fast, however, in most other cases for adults, anybody can fast. In some situations you should really talk to your doctor. If you're taking medications for example, some need to be taken with food and in those cases you should talk to your doctor about how you should adjust your medications so that you can fast. The other situation is if you're on medications that are going to affect your blood sugar. So make sure that you talk to your doctor if you're really taking any medications at all. If you have a history of eating disorders or anorexia nervosa, then you might want to be careful and also speak to your doctor. When to fast? You can fast anytime you feel like it. You can fast once a year, you can do it once a month, once a week or even every day. And how long you fast for, is completely up to you. You could just fast from dinner until breakfast the next day, that's 12 or 14 hours. You could go to 16 hours, which is called time restricted eating. You could go to 24 hours like a one meal a day schedule, or you can do multiple day fasts. The world record for fasting is 382 days, so there's really no upper limit to fasting. And you can also vary it up, so if you're on holidays, going on cruise or it's Christmas time, you can fast if you want to or you can stop fasting. Maybe after Christmas you might want to lose some extra weight, so you might want to start or continue fasting. It's completely up to you and your personal goals. Why fast? There are many great reasons to fast. Probably the most obvious one is to lose weight. And it's a great way to lose weight. After all if you don't eat you're going to lose weight, but there's a lot of other health benefits to fasting. You can reverse your type 2 diabetes. If you don't eat, your blood sugars will fall and that's going to let you manage your blood sugars without taking medications. And if you reduce your weight and reverse your type 2 diabetes that's going to put you at far less risk of all types of diseases, like heart disease, stroke, cancer. And these are the biggest problems that we face in health today. But other than that lots of people feel better when they're fasting. That's why people often say it's a cleansing period or a detoxification. A lot of people feel that they have more energy when they're fasting and they feel that they can think more clearly and there's good reasons why that might be but there's also other more practical reasons. It's a way to save time, it's a way to save money, it's a way to simplify your life and that's not even to mention a lot of spiritual and religious reasons to fast. How to fast? Fasting is really just any period of time that you don't eat and it can differ along two major pathways. One is what is allowed during the fasting period. A classic fast is water only, but there's many different ways to change that. For example green tea, herbal teas, black tea, coffee, coffee with cream or even bone broth. And while these are not classic fasts you can still do very well, 
so don't rule them out. You really can fast for any period of time, but there's two very popular regimens. One popular regimen is called time-restricted eating. It's also called a 16 to 8 and what it means is that you fast for 16 hours and you eat during an 8 hour window. For example you might decide to start eating at 11 am and eat only until 7 pm and then after 7 pm you'll stop. Another popular regimen is a 24 hour fast, which is sometimes also called a one meal a day. Here you might eat from breakfast to breakfast or dinner to dinner. For example, giving you close to a 24 hour period where you're not eating. So while a time restricted eating it might do six to seven days per week, a one meal a day schedule most people will do three to four times a week, but there's nothing stopping you from doing more or less according to your needs. Dinner fasting protocol. So if you're just starting to fast, what would I recommend? I would start by cutting out snacks for a week. Just eating breakfast, lunch and dinner. And then you can progress to a 16 hour fast or time restricted eating. And during that period of time you might allow green tea, herbal teas, and coffee with a little bit of cream, but no sweetener. This is a very lax variation just to let you get used to it. If you're getting great results then continue, there's no reason to stop. If you're not getting the results you're hoping for, then you can slowly change it to a longer fast or maybe more of a classic water only fast. But remember, whatever you do, make sure that you're staying safe and healthy while you're doing it, you're feeling well and keep on going. Fasting tips. Make it a habit. Just remember that everything is hard when you get started you're not used to it. Everything seems so difficult, but if you keep doing it over and over again, you get used to it. This isn't just true for fasting, it's true for everything. If you go into a very bright room for example you're going to be blinded at first, but then you're going to get used to it. Same thing for fasting. At first it's going to feel very strange not to eat, but the more you do it, the more you get into the habit of it. For example I don't eat breakfast so often and it's really easy for me to skip breakfast, because I'm in that habit. It doesn't feel strange for me to skip breakfast. It feels strange for me to have breakfast. When I have it, it's a real treat, it's something I don't often get. If you make it a habit you're going to be able to do it day after day after day, without even thinking about it. And that was the secret in the 1970s when they ate dinner at 6 o'clock and they didn't eat again until 8 o'clock. It was a habit, so they always got 12 to 14 hours of fasting without even thinking about it. If they wanted to do more, they could simply tack it on. But if you make it a habit, you're going to have automatic weight loss. And that's the basics of fasting to get you started. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe below. Click on the bell for notifications and check out the other videos.